Okay, let's review three ways to organize an Excel spreadsheet. There is actually almost an infinite number of ways to do it, but here are three uh, that I recommend, depending on what you need it for. Uh, the first one is for simple calculations. This is what I call, you know, either back of the envelope calculations, which are going to be real simple, uh, to very elaborate ones. But basically, it's a very freeform way to do Excel. Um, an example here is, you know, this this happens to be the number. Of, of rows in Excel. Uh, this is the number of columns. Uh, so let's calculate what the total number of cells is. We just use the equal sign and then multiply those two numbers together and that's how many Excel cells there are potentially that you could be using. Um, and I'm going to actually uh, format that cell using uh, comma and no decimal places and see what that number actually comes out to be. So it looks like 17 billion plus cells. That's amazing. I doubt anyone's ever used that many. But anyway, this is the open form. Of course, you could do additional uh, things here. But the point is with, with free form, you know, you can pretty much have things wherever you want them uh, in pretty much any format, any order. It doesn't really matter. Um, and that's free form. So let's go to the next one. Um, is if you're wanting to spot trends, meaning changes over time, um, then you usually, usually you want to have a time dimension like weeks or months or days or what have you or hours. Um, and then you want to have something you're measuring. So here I've got week one, week two, week three, all the way through week eight. And I've got number of clicks. So let's say we're doing a, an online ad campaign and we want to figure out how many clicks um, we're getting. We might look at uh, we want to organize our data in such a way that we could easily insert, for example, a, a line graph. So I'm going to highlight um, the data. This I'm, notice that I'm including the uh, the headers, the, the 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 labels, and also the the date dates. And I'm going to enter. I'm going to choose a line graph since line graphs are really good for um, for looking at trends over time. And um, that's how it looks. And let's scroll down a little bit here so we can see this. I'm actually going to make this a little bit smaller so it'll fit on our screen. Uh, i got kind of an enlarged screen here so we can uh, easily see what's going on in this video. And this is labeled. I'm gonna, I like to get rid of the label if it's already labeled at the top. Usually put a good label on it like um, uh, clicks. Let's call it number of clicks week one through week eight would be a pretty descriptive name um, and you can also do things like add labels to it um, for example I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight I'm gonna highlight that and right click it and click on add labels and now it actually puts the data labels right in there um, what's neat about this too is if you want to let's say you updated this number to 110 um, or in that case I updated it to the wrong number 110 it changes it right here automatically so that's pretty neat um, so anyway the best way to do that type of trend spotting is to uh, is to uh, add it over time um, and uh, you can just tell there's a lot of really cool features um, you can also select data and do other things here but great feature with uh, with Excel and definitely worth uh, looking into but make sure in this case you organize your worksheet that way now the third way is the way I like to do it the most often um, when you're dealing with very large data sets. Like you can tell right here, we have quite a bit of data. Let's zoom in on some of this data so you can see it better. Um, a little bit bigger, not much bigger. Let's actually zoom in a little bit more here just so we can get it real large. Okay, there we go. So um, you can see all this data here. Well, um, notice what we've done here is we've, we've organized it the way you would organize a database. So the key here, the most important thing to note, is that every one of these uh, rows, which in a database is called a record, um, is a unique record. So um, it's, in this case, it's unique by customer ID number. It could be unique by just the, per the first and last name. It could be unique by an order number, however you want to do it. Um, but have it be identifiably unique in each, in each way. So because we've summarized all of our customers past 12 months of sales, it, it stands to reason there's only be one customer per line. Now, if this were an order ID, you might have one, one customer ordering more than once, in which case you might have a different situation. The unique, uh, what they call a key field, might be um, based on the order number rather than the customer ID number. But at any rate, um, note how 
every one of these columns, which in a database is called a field, because in this case you're really using this like a database. Even Excel, technically Excel is a database if you use it properly. And by the way, if you organize it this way, you can actually import this into Microsoft Access or SQL, other, other database programs uh, directly and use them that way. But um, notice how we have uh, each each column is a, is a specific, uh, its own data field, so that uh, it's totally complete. This, this uh, record here for Kenny O'Connor is a complete set of data, as is this record for Arden Barclay, okay, all the way down the list. So um, if you're ever going to work with large sets of numbers, then organize your spreadsheet this way. While we're on the topic, let's look at pivot tables. Pivot tables are one of the most underutilized and underestimated uh, elements of Excel. Um, or features of Excel, I should say. But let's use a pivot table. Let's jump right in. Um, pivot table is a great way to organize your data. So let's say, for example, we want to figure out the average of these numbers here in a quick way. We can look at, um, we can look at, actually, let's, let's look at the average by segment, okay? If I wanted to know the average, well, we could just go down here, you know, enter the, the function for average, um, and, um, we end up knowing what the answer is. There's your average, okay? Easy enough. But what if you want to know average by segment? Okay, that's, that's a little more time consuming to figure out how to do that. Well, if you have a pivot table, it's quite easy. So let's, let's, let's go ahead and do it. Let's uh, highlight these columns here, just these two columns. And we're going to click on the pivot table um, uh, function here. You can also uh, do it up here. Go to insert and pivot table. And I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. It's going to insert it on, an, on another worksheet, which I'm going to call uh, Pivot 2, since I've already got a pivot. And then I'm going to put the, the, uh, the column, or the category, I should say, here in row labels. And I'm going to put the, um, so I got that backwards, put the category, which is this one, in row labels, and this one over in values. And notice that it defaults to count. So basically, it doesn't show us the dollar values yet. It's just showing us the number of, uh, of each kind of record. So it shows us that there are 32 of this one and there are 24 of that one, etc. But I want to know that the, the um, let's look at the average. So I'm going to right click over here. I'm going to go to value field settings and I'm going to change it to average. Okay. Well, look what that did. Now suddenly it's showing me the average uh, for each one. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. But let's, we're not done yet. We could also look at other numbers. We could look at um, maximum. Which one, is the, which one is the maximum for each one? So in this case, it's showing me that the largest value for female 20,000 to 60,000 at this age range is 918, okay, etc. So this shows the maximum for each one of those segments. Same thing with minimum, okay? Um, so you can see that it just really has a lot of a lot of different functions here. Uh, you can look at standard deviations. You can look at counting uh, numbers. You can look at variation. Uh, just a lot of really cool things. The most common ones that I use are count, which we already looked at, and also sum, which adds them all up together. So notice how easy pivot tables are to use. This is not a complete tutorial on pivot tables, but it gives you an idea of some of the fun ways to use them. Um, so I'm going to stop right there for pivot tables, but definitely explore pivot tables. You can't break it, so just play around with it. You know, drag things in. These are the four the four areas you can drag things into. Uh, you can also have things go across the top, for example, if you want to do it that way. Um, and I got, again, I did it in burst, but there's there you have it across the top, and you can do the same thing. You can have it be by, for example, sum, and there it is. So a different way to format it. So anyway, that's, that's pivot tables, but uh, enjoy. Give it a try.